Hey guys, what's going on? Seth here. In this video, I want to show you a little overview of my paperless filing system that I use to stay organized in my real estate investing business. So this was a real big struggle for me, especially back when I was getting started. I just had like hard copies and sticky notes all over the place. I used to get a little sophisticated by using hanging file folders and stuff like that, but it was still just a huge hassle just having physical copies everywhere. Because first of all, it took up space that I didn't have and also if I ever needed to access that stuff when I was on the road or away from home, I couldn't do it because there was only one physical copy of that. What I eventually uh, figured out and started transitioning to was a paperless system using Dropbox. And Dropbox, chances are you've already heard of it, but if you haven't, I'd strongly recommend it. It's essentially a free software that can store a lot of your files in the cloud and sync up with other devices and computers so you can access it from anywhere where you're sharing that same account. Other options for doing the same kind of thing would be Google Drive, that's another solid option. So you don't have to use Dropbox, Box, but Dropbox is what I started with and that's kind of what I've stuck with over the years and uh, it's just been a huge game changer because I can pull up anything I need from my phone. I can also store some pretty big files and share those files really easily with other people if I want to and their free plan gives you a lot of space just right out of the gate but if you want to pay for more storage you can do that as well and that's actually what I'm currently doing but for a long time I just stuck with the free plan and it was more than enough and I will say that the folders and file organizations organization uh, infrastructure that I'm about to show you, this is just what works for me. I'm not saying you have to do it this exact same way. You may have an even better way that's more efficient than mine that's working better for you. And if so, by all means, you can stick with that. This is just intended for people who were struggling at the same level that I was when I was getting started, and they don't really know how to make this work to their advantage. I'm going to give you a tour of my actual folders in my business, just so you can get an idea for how my system works. And also, if you're somebody who's doing a huge amount amount of volume on an annual basis, like hundreds of deals, then you may want to look into something even more sophisticated. I know there's a lot of CRM software options out there that can automate a lot of this stuff and store things in different ways. But uh, this is sort of just the baseline. I think you should have at least this kind of thing in place just so that you're not clicking into one giant folder and trying to sort through hundreds of different documents trying to find what you're looking for. So if you need help in this department and you know who you are, let's jump into the computer and I'll show you how mine works. All right, so this is it. So when I click on the Dropbox icon on my desktop, this is the folder it opens up. This is the top level folder and each one of these six folders you see here are kind of like giant buckets with a lot of stuff in them. But uh, everything does have its proper place within those giant buckets, so to speak. So this one right here, personal, that's where I put literally anything that's not business related. Archive is stuff that like maybe I worked on a long time ago, maybe old business opportunities or projects or things that just aren't that relevant anymore. I don't really need to see them on a daily, weekly or even monthly basis, but I don't necessarily want to delete them or get rid of them either. There may come a point in time at which I want to go back and see that stuff again. So that's what goes there in archive. Public, this is where I put anything that I want to share publicly with somebody else. So one of the nice things about Dropbox is that it's very easy to share files with people especially large files, which would otherwise be kind of a pain. And I know Google Drive and other similar software options like Dropbox can do pretty much the same thing. And these shareable files actually don't even need to be in this folder. I just keep them in there just so it's straight in my head. Hey, everything in here is shared with somebody else. Uh, RE Tipster, this is a massive folder, obviously, with like most of the stuff that I've ever done that pertains to retipster.com. And when I click on it, there's lots of things within this folder that goes even deeper. And when I click on each one of these things it goes even deeper than that so again even though there's a ton of stuff everything has its proper place one of the keys to staying organized is we don't just dump a bunch of unrelated stuff in a folder and call it good if there's something that has a common purpose we put it in one spot so that it's easier to find in this folder right here called rentals so this has to do with all of my buy and hold properties, whether I own it currently or I've owned it in the past, or if it's something I'm looking to possibly own in the future, all of those long-term investment opportunities go right in here. And just for example here, when I click on multifamily, so these are like some of the past duplexes that I've owned and I have them assorted by address. So I could click into any one of these and find all that information. I've got information about my old property management company, corporate documents for the LLC that holds these properties, all the related tax and accounting stuff, 
prospects over here. So if I'm ever looking at possibly buying a new property, I've got uh, a new spreadsheet or possibly even a new folder, depending on what stage it's at, where I have a lot of my analysis and information that I'm gathering on those properties. At this point, all the properties I'm looking at are just an analysis stage. So there's no folders at this point but if there were deals that were getting a lot closer to closing there'd probably be a lot more information for each one and uh let's see over here so land so this is my land business and when i click on this i just give you a quick tour of what these things are so right here contracts and forms these are a lot of the templates that i use again and again and again and when i just need blank versions i can find them right here lists so these are all the historical county lists that i use for direct mail whether i got it from the county or from a data service this is like the archive of every list i've ever worked with is all in here and then corporate docs so this is for the llc that i use to buy and sell all of my land this is where i keep like the articles of organization and the operating agreement and tax id number and any of that stuff that i have to keep track of uh quest ira so this is kind of interesting this actually isn't tied to my llc however i do use this to buy and sell land this is a self-directed roth ira and currently my custodian for that is a company called quest ira whenever i want to hold my land in that investment vehicle all that stuff is in here not only like blank forms and templates that i have to use for that but also like copies of the documentation i've used for past deals websites right here so any websites that i have running for my land business all of that stuff is in here not only the buying website but also the selling website and also past renditions of my old websites are all in there voicemail system so i've actually got a separate video and blog post about this but my voicemail system has changed up a number of times over the years and in here i've got copies of, of all the audio recordings that I've used and all the scripts that I've put together for my voicemail message and then marketing so this is everything to do with like my logo or branding for the company or anything related to that letter templates so these are all the different templates that I currently use or have used in the past whether I'm using postcards or blind offers or some combination of the two all that stuff is in here where I can keep track of it tax and accounting stuff that's exactly what it sounds like like old information for my tax returns or things that I need to keep track of for my current uh, accounting work like QuickBooks files and invoices and receipts if I ever need those things and then other that's kind of just like a catch-all for all the other stuff that doesn't really fall into any of these other folders and uh, memory lapse these are like copies of old passwords most of them are irrelevant these days because I use LastPass but there are a few of them in there that I just uh, keep for old time's sake in case I ever need those and then purchasing activity and selling activity so these are by far the two most active folders in this uh, parent folder of the land business so the purchasing activity these are records of like every property I've ever purchased or even made an offer on the way that I sort these is starting by the state and then once I click on the state like if I click on Michigan here for example and then I find all the different counties that I've ever worked in and in this case let's go click on Midland and uh, these are all the people who I have uh, either purchased properties from or at least sent offers to and I should also clarify when I'm sending out blind offers which is basically a method by which you send out hundreds or thousands of offers at a time in your first direct mail campaign I don't keep track of each one of those with an individual folder because that would be insane that would be a ton of stuff to keep track of these are only the ones where I've had enough back and forth with the seller to justify me actually opening up a file and starting to do due diligence maybe putting together a formal purchase agreement and sending it to them individually that kind of thing so this is definitely not like every person ever including blind offers but all the ones that reached some level of significance so in this case um, if I go and click on this one right here there's four different folders here and this is actually reflective of how I used to keep my hard copy paper system way back in the day when I first started my land business and I didn't really have all this stuff paperless and in Dropbox like this. So I used to have these old hanging paper file folders separated in four different sections. And one of those sections, I would have the title work for the property just so I had records of all the title work I did, obviously, to make sure that the title was clear. If I ordered a title commitment, that would have been in here. Or if I did my own title work by myself, that would be in here and uh, purchase agreement so this is where I would have a copy of the signed purchase agreement and also the word document that I used to put it together so I've got that stuff right here so due diligence when I click on this this is where I would put anything that related to my research on the property when I was trying to find out you know everything about it I've actually got a spreadsheet right here that kind of walks me through a lot of the standard questions I want to ask about any vacant land property I'm looking to purchase like whether it's in a flood zone or wetlands whether it's got road access the size shape dimensions all that stuff and then also what my uh, approximate offer price might be so all that stuff lives within this due diligence work 
worksheet. And in this case, it's actually kind of rare. I, I don't usually do this because usually I can just deal with the, the county's GIS parcel maps for this. But in this case, I actually ordered a survey on the property because this particular property was landlocked and it was kind of tricky to figure out where it was exactly. And I actually wanted to get stakes on site so the future buyer could see that. So in this case, I do have a survey. So anytime I get a survey, that definitely falls under due diligence and that would go here as well. And then the deed, taxes, and supporting documentation. So this was where I would have a copy of the recorded deed, just so I've got that. Any supporting documentation, like a property transfer affidavit or whatever I have to do to notify the county of the sale price and who the new owner was, that kind of thing would go in here. And really anything that would get recorded along with the deed. And in this case, this is one PDF that has not only the deed, but a lot of other relevant stuff here as well, including like a death certificate and uh, letters of authority and stuff like that. So a lot of stuff can be buried in one PDF if uh, I need to, or I can have it separated out into multiple different PDFs. So that's just a quick overview of the records I keep and where I keep them when I am buying a property. Uh, and then when it comes time to sell a property, and this is actually set up very similar to the purchasing activity folder. When I click on this, I can see first of all the state level. And then when I click on the state, I can see all the counties. And then when I click on the county, I can see the person that I ended up selling to. When I click on this, uh, this is kind of a similar setup, but there's different information here. So I've got a copy of the original ad that I put together. And the reason I do that is just so I can remember what I said about it and what kind of pictures I included with it. Not that it's terribly important, but just in case I'm ever trying to remember what this property was all about, I can have that really quickly and easily right here. And uh, I've also got a copy of the survey here as well. And then over here, I've got a copy of the purchase agreement. So this is a scanned copy of the fully executed purchase agreement that I signed with that buyer. In this case, this was originally a hard copy piece of paper with our wet signatures on it. So I just ran it through my scanner and save the PDF right here. But these days I usually use DocuSign for this. So I don't really have to scan anything. I just have a digital copy from the get go and that would be stored here as well. But in any event, whatever purchase agreement I have signed with that person, I just have a copy right in here so I can see it if I ever need it. And then over here, the disclosure statement. So whenever I sell a property, I have my buyers sign a disclosure statement, which basically just explains that uh, if they wanted to do any research, it was on them to do that. They're never gonna come back and sue me or give me trouble for anything. They're basically just totally wiping out any potential liability. And I don't really need to do this, but I just choose to do it. Whether a property has title issues that I for some reason failed to catch, or if I somehow mistakenly misrepresented the property, or if they just misunderstood what I was trying to say, no matter what, the idea with this document is just to release me from any liability. And then over here, just like the other folder on the buying end, this is where I keep copies of all the deed documentation, any uh, property transfer affidavits that I would send to the township or city uh, or anything else related to that. So that's what goes in here. I think that's a pretty uh, good overview of uh, everything that lives inside of this folder. Obviously, there's a lot more stuff we could get into if I went through each one of these folders, but that would make this video about 10 times longer than it needs to be. Again, there's not really one right way to organize your stuff. And I'm not saying that this way is the best way ever. You might have a much better system than I do. But if you have no idea where to start, if you feel like you just completely disorganized and don't have stuff put together well, this is just one option. And this is what has has worked for me. So whatever that's worth, I just wanted to show that to you guys. I hope it's helpful. And uh, if you have some better way to do this that you think is a lot more effective than this, by all means, let me know. It would be interesting to hear what's working for you too. Thanks for watching. I wish you all the best as you're trying to stay organized and I'll talk to you later.